Hampton's latest study of nearly 1,000 women reported that one out of every five haven't found one yet. 67% of them admitted that it was because they were waiting for somebody else to make the first move. And 52% of them said it was because they hadn't found somebody appropriate. And other sites continue to advise women that it's okay, just be patient and don't settle. Now, these findings aren't about dating, sex, or orgasms, and it's okay if you thought that. Um, they're about mentoring, but the way they're written about makes it seem like it's some weird dating scheme. There's so much information on what makes the perfect mentor, what makes the perfect mentee, how to ask the right way, how not to ask somebody. And it's really fascinating, it really is. But it's also really frustrating and intimidating. I mean, maybe it's just me, but after reading a lot of this, the image of my mentor starts to look like a fabulous fairy. And she's wearing a Wonder Woman outfit, and she has all the wisdom I need. Until I read a really simple definition. A mentoring relationship is about helping somebody by providing advice, guidance, and or support. And when I read that, I understood it, because I could connect with it. I mean, immediately the image of my mentor wasn't of some fabulous fairy anymore. She was of my family and the women in my life. The way I see it, <laughs> mentoring is like a braid. The women in my life, they shared advice with me, and they cared about me. I thought about my parents, my grandmothers, my sisters, my aunts, and I tightly sitting around a table as we packed husk leaves for holiday tamales, and they shared advice with my sisters and I on how to take honey and lime for a sore throat, or aloe vera for constipation, or how if you can make it, you don't have to buy it, or how if, <laughs> or even how if he hits you once, he will do it again. And that's the thing. Sometimes people make us believe that what we learn in academia or the professional arena holds greater value than what we learn in our own homes and our own traditions. When I was trying to learn how to be a good event planner, I chased the PR professional and I talked to the seasoned event coordinators but I also thought about my grandmother, who could feed 16 people with $6. <laughs> and how our neighbor's brother's cousin's mechanic knew my grandmother, not because she took a networking session, but because she talked and she listened to everybody. When you give yourself the right to redefine what mentoring means to you at any stage in your life, you start to see yourself differently. You start to see other people differently. Allow yourself to define what are you going to teach somebody, what are you going to learn from somebody. Embrace that and thank them. When I was younger, my mother used to braid my hair almost every day before I went to school. I used to sit on her bed, and she sat behind me, and she tightly grabbed my hair and <laughs> continued to weave it. And the kids at school, they used to tease me about it. And they used to call me an immigrant, like it was dirty. And I told my mom I didn't want to wear trenzas anymore. So my mom, like every other day, sat me on her bed, and she pulled my head back again, and she continued to weave my hair, and she told me and reminded me, don't you ever let anyone change who you are. The very nature of mentoring between women is to nurture each other. The women in my life, the teachers, the directors, the professors, my sisters, my grandmothers, my comadres, my professors, the painters, the artists, they protect, they nurture, they encourage, they empower each other. Mentoring is like a braid. All of the women in my life picked up where the others had left off, gently holding the divine thread that connects us, closing the physical, emotional, spiritual spaces between us. Just like weaving braid, you will take the advice given to you, take some, leave it behind, take some and pass it down to somebody else. The knowledge given to us is a gift. It is not for us to keep. 
Madeline Albright reminds us there's a special place in hell for women that don't help other women. Remember that. <laughs> and it is up to us to connect ourselves across generations in this way. And depending on the type of braid that you want, you'll need three, five, or seven different strands. The same is true of the mentors that you want in your life. Gift yourself the opportunity to have more than one. One size does not fit all. Sometimes we've taken all the advice, we've done our braid, and we still don't like what we have done with it. So remind yourself and remind your sisters and your brothers that it's okay to take it off and start all over again. You can get new mentors, you can take more advice, you can leave it. Sometimes we're fortunate and we have mentors that pick our head up and remind us how truly great we are. Sometimes we get to teach somebody else how to braid their own hair.